Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, nations, and languages. Now we saw that in the beginning of chapter 3, and we saw that at the end of chapter 3. The beginning was when he brought this great image, golden. And then we saw at the end when he proclaims God. So now he's proclaiming to all the people that he proclaimed about his image to, to proclaim about God. That dwell in all the earth, all the known earth. They really had no idea about the other side of the world. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. So he acknowledges God as the high God. Still has a few other little gods there. Remember, Babylonian religion is multi-gods. God for everything. Female gods. Male gods and in-between gods. How great are his signs. And how mighty are his wonders. Showed him his dream. Took three men out of the fire. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion is from generation to generation. Oh, he acknowledges God. He acknowledges the kingdom of God. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my power. This is personal testimony now. <clears throat> He's doing well. I saw a dream which made me afraid. Now why is there so much emphasis on dreams in the Old Testament? I'll tell you this plain and simple. You can fight it if you want, but you're wrong. They had no written Bible. Now, I'm not saying God will, cannot use a dream. But that dream is ordered to be put against with the Bible. If your dream matches the Bible, okay. But revelation comes by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing not by dreams. But by the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharp and doing. Not a dream. These are people who had no complete Bible. Which made me afraid. And the thoughts upon my bed. Sleeping in bed. And the visions of my head troubled me. Well, it is a dream of vision. Therefore. Made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me. Didn't he learn his lesson? He's still relying on the world. These are the same men that could not answer the first dream. That were all going to be killed. That they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Now maybe he forgot that night. Maybe such a panic he didn't think. But, you know, maybe it's just routine. Bring those magicians. Then came the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them. This time he tells the dream. This is what I dreamed. Last time he says, I want you to tell me what the dream is. But they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. They couldn't tell him. Here's my dream. Can't answer you, King. And these guys were still on the payroll or the occupation of the government? You got more astrologers, magicians, Chaldeans, soothsayers in the government of America today than you got Bible believing Christians. Babylon is no different from America. When was the last time any president ever said, you know what, i got a problem here. Give me a Bible-believing Christian with a King James Bible. Let's see what God has to say about it. Let's, let's find that one. You want to talk about this nation being a Christian nation. 
You know, since we've had a president, we've had no real revival in America. The revivals were before the president, before George Washington. But at the last, the very last, Daniel came in before me. Now again, he's telling the story. I called in everybody, but Daniel I called last. Whose name is Belshazzar, according to the name of my God. So he's still worshiping the gods. But in the last three chapters, he's had a change. And we need to read this chapter very closely. Maybe some people won't agree. I can be wrong. And in whom is the spirit of the holy gods? Small g. Now he's calling the Holy Spirit a small g. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belshazzar, master of the magicians, wow, you, you just see what, what he just did? He just called God a, a magician. Master of the magician. The chief of magician. He's calling the work of Daniel magic. I guess that's where Christians can get. We can do magic for Jesus. This guy ain't saved. This guy too says, hey, I call in the name of my God. Because I know that the spirit small s of the holy God small g is in thee, and no secret trouble with thee. Well, yeah, Daniel was troubled a couple of times, and he called the three friends and said, we need to get in a prayer meeting. Our life is on the line. We need an answer from God. I have seen an interpretation thereof. Look at the magician, small s, small g. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. So it was a great big tree. The tree grew. It's light. It's big. It's growing. And it was strong. Big, strong limbs. You could build a, 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 a clubhouse in it. Matthew 13, the guys right. And the height thereof reached unto heaven. So it was a very high, strong tree. And the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. So it flourished out. You ever seen any trademarks of movies and books? A big flourishing tree? Comes out of a Bible. Well, we're going to be told that this is Nebuchadnezzar. This is his kingdom. The leaves there were fair. Ezekiel 31, 6. So they were healthy leaves. Leaves have to do something with the photosynthesis. Oh, I don't know what the science is, but leaves are important to a tree. And the fruit, there's fruit. Here is an unsaved heathen who has fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under. So here is a tree that has fruit, and the fruit is edible. And under the branches and leaves of this tree, there are, remember, he's in Iraq area. It's a desert. It's a shadow. It's a comfort. It's a place to... To relieve yourself from the sun, God. And the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls thereof. So there are birds in the tree. Do you know what fowls are a type of in the Bible? Check out the parable of the sower. Learn something there. Guess who he has in his branches? A little bird told me. Go we'll ask Solomon about those birds. Birdman of Alcatraz, the birds, the crow, 
the heaven dwelt in the bowels thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. The world was fed by this. The field is a type of world in the Bible. I saw my I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold a watcher. And an holy one, no capital, came down from heaven. Job 6.10, Psalm 16.10, Acts 2.27, Deuteronomy 13.8, Psalms 89.19. He cried aloud and said thus, Jeremiah 4, 16, Ezekiel 31, 1 through 8. Hew down the tree. No, 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 no. Hew down the tree! Right aloud. Don't yell at me. You're too loud. People in the Bible are loud. Cut off his branches. Why? It's a healthy, growing, living, functional food tree. Shake off his leaves, scatter his fruit, let the beast get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Isaiah 42.10, Exodus 10.15 Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field. What the Bible says about grass. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. His portion is talking about the stump. This is a weird pepperoni dream. This guy was Italian. Continue. Let his heart. A stump has a heart? Be changed from a man's... Oh, so we're not talking about a tree, are we? And the Bible likens from Genesis to Revelation men as trees, as parables. A guy who's blind, Jesus opens up his eyes and says, What do you see? I see men as trees. Jesus died on a tree. There are kings in the Old Testament spoken of as trees. Trees have a family tree. Limbs like men. They even say that if you cut a tree, it cries. I don't know about that, but that's what they say. And let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watcher. Somebody's watching. You better watch out. You better not count. I'm telling you why. It sure is not Santa Claus I'm reading here. He was saying this big fat man with a red suit came down my chimney. That's not what he said. And demanded by the word of the Holy Ones. To the intent that the living may know that the Most High, capital H, ruleth in the kingdom of men. Now, how did Nebuchadnezzar know when this guy spoke, he said capital H? Now, this is interesting. I'm trying to find back over here. He said the Most High God, and he gave him a small g. We read it, and I lost it. Verse 9, Holy Gods. Well, was what he said, most high and I miss the high God, that's, that's God, but most high rulers, that's the Holy Spirit telling you exactly what they meant. In the kingdom, you can say men wrote the Bible, yeah, but look at that one. That's a heathen who doesn't believe in God, giving him the credit where he hasn't given God the credit. In the kingdom of men. Oh, you mean God's in charge, charge of all? God's the one who put the president in office? 
and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Well, that's kind of interesting. God will put in office, Romans 13, who he will, and they are called ministers. Even if you don't like the guy that's in office. And set us up over it the basis of men. He'll take someone who's just the bottom of the bladder. And that's called promotion. Promotion comes out of the north. No, prom promotion comes out of God, according to Psalm. Or it says east, west, south, but God. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, the, for the spirit of the holy gods, small letters, is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonished for one hour. Picking his brain, Lord God, what on earth? His thoughts troubled him. Didn't seem like God answered him quick like he did in chapter 2, was it? Sweet out of prayer. He comes out of that prayer. Oh, man, what on earth is going on here? The king spake and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee. Ooh, that's what troubled him. I am going to deliver bad news to the king. You know, you just don't do that in, in any nation but America. In any nation but America, you can, if you walk up to their ruler and start cussing them out, start giving them a bad name, giving them, you're in prison or you're dead. They hate thee. And the interpretation thereof to thine enemy. The king that the, the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all under which the beasts of the field dwelt, upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king. Simple. Right there. And become strong. For, and thou art grown and become strong. Look how mighty his nation is now. For thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven. And thy dominion to the end of the earth. Whereas the king saw a watcher. And a holy one come down from heaven, saying, Hew, down, Hew the tree down, destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, to seven times pastor now you wonder that when he hears that iron and brass and wonder he started trembling remember what the iron and brass was in his last dream he just said i got i got news about you it's about your enemy you mean uh oh it's the end of my kingdom here comes the iron and the brass this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high capital h which has come upon my lord the king. No, he calls him my lord the king. This is the guy who sacked Jerusalem. This is the guy who's going to have all the magicians killed along with him and his friends. This is the guy who just threw his three friends into a fiery furnace because they wouldn't worship a golden image. Lord. Daniel shows this king respect and proper title. You know what it says about the Lord there? After all, Abraham had his wife lie and put her into, into the arms of another man. The Bible says she still called him Lord. 
that they shall drive thee from men. Solitaire. And I don't mean the card game. God is in the vision. He has separated this man so he can work on his man. It is isolation. A thing that used to be practiced when people had certain diseases, they would put on the door of the hospital. Isolation. No one allowed. Quarantined. Condemned. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You're going to go live with the animals. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, a type of Satan. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. Seven times shall pass over till thou know that the Most High, we'll get into this again, the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. I don't like Obama. Through the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. The kingdom of men of the present United States is ruled by God. And if you don't like the form of government, this or that, you take it up with God because God allowed it. You want a Christian nation when the churches are anything but Christian. And the preachers are anything but biblical. And the Christians are doing everything but what God tells them to do. How come people are more excited if a circus is coming in town rather than Jesus is coming? How come Christians are more excited when a holiday and vacation is coming rather than Jesus is coming? And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Now, he's cut down to a stump. But there's still light, there's still watering given to the stump that it does not die completely. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Now, Daniel is going to step outside the dream for a minute. He's already told the king what's going to happen. He says, Break off thy sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Uh-oh. He's unrighteous. He's not helping the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Daniel just told him, say, King, you're wicked. <laughs> you got another Nathan here. And no one speaks about David. But he walks up to a, to a Babylonian king who has the power to throw three men in a fiery furnace after he and with it seven times more in it, he walks up to the king and says, King, you're a sinner. You better repent. You better get right if you want things to be right in your life. How's that? Same thing with Nathan. Well, there was this lamb nourished by the family. Oh, got to pay four lambs for that. Thou art, David. Thou art the man. Daniel is a Nathan. And it came and all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. So the dreams are over. The conversation between Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel are over. Time passes. At the end, and now he's still telling. And all this came upon the King Nebuchadnezzar. What we just read. At the end of twelve months, a year later, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. You know somebody else who walked in the palace of a city and got in big trouble? Did it David? And he used his power to get a woman that was not his? All right. The scripture is scripture. The king spanked and said in Luke 18, 14, Is not this great Babylon? That I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. Does he got pride or does he got pride? He's proud. Made in Babylon. While the word was in the king's mouth, 
He's talking to himself. No one else is there. There fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. God speaks out of heaven as he spoke to Paul or Saul, as he spoke about Jesus at his baptism, as he spoke to the disciples. He speaks to Nebuchadnezzar. An audio voice. They shall drive thee from men. Thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. Romans, I mean, Revelation 13. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee. Revelation 13, 12. Until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, the second advent. And giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was, was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men. Kind of rapture kind of thing. I don't know if I want to use the word rapture. But didn't the spirit take Ezekiel bring him over to places? And did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. He had no shelter. Till his hairs were grown like eagle feathers. And his nails like bird claws. Now where do you find this character in the world? How about the werewolf? A man that turns into the beast. Taken out of the King James 6. Nebuchadnezzar. Became a beast. And he ate grass. And he let his nails grow long. He let his hair grow long. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was speaking about them. He's speaking again. Lifted up my eyes unto heaven. A pig can't do that. This little note there. And my understanding returned unto me. Here comes understanding. And I blessed the Most High. I made the Most High happy. And I praise and honor Him that. Liveth forever, the eternal God. You know, there were gods in the Babylonian language, uh, religion that died, were sent to the underworld, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, an everlasting eternal God, without end. His kingdom is from generation to generation. That is King Nebuchadnezzar quoting from himself what he speaks about God. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I believe Nebuchadnezzar, somehow in the Old Testament sense, is saved and will be in heaven. I believe at the great white throne judgment, his name will be in the book of life. By chapter 4. He realized at the end of chapter 4, he is never mentioned again. He calls upon God and glorifies God. And as far as the world, he's gone. He's mentioned as well, but there's no more written about him. And when it comes time for Belshazzar to have his trouble, it's brought up about his father, the testimony of his father. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. Look at that. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And he doeth according to his will. Not even Baptists believe that. In the army of heaven. 
and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand. No one's going to stop this God. And say unto him, look at this, what doest thou? Nebuchadnezzar just told you that you can't walk up to God and say, why did you do that for? I mean, there are some times I ask God, what doest thou? For learning, for, for wisdom, for knowledge. So I, what I'm going through in a period of time, and I say, what do you want out of me, Lord? But what Nebuchadnezzar is saying here, God is so mighty, you ain't just going to walk up to say, hey, homeboy, what, what you doing? I've had people from, from the prison and work and all that. They, they, they told me, I ain't no old man. I'm going to walk up to Jesus and call my homeboy. Really? Before how many electric bolts go up your butt and out your mouth? They think God is this sweet little, you know, hangout. According to Nebuchadnezzar, he is powerful. He's got an army. You know where you find that army in heaven? Revelation 12. They are battling the army of Satan. You know that army of heaven? That's us when we come back in the second advent, the Lord Jesus Christ, followed by an horseback. You just read about the second advent, the Lord Jesus Christ, by a heathen king. Who didn't know how to teach the poor and was a sinner. The guy was lost. The guy is lost. He was involved in sins, Daniel said, and now he's proclaiming who God is. Does it sound like he maybe somehow he got right? Now he doesn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. But I take his words and his confession to be real strong. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Hmm? To Abraham's bosom. Yeah, I mean, salvation is that he's not going to hell. That's did you really? I mean, the Old Testament is just really weird. And you can't say, okay, the law, because the law has been completely put aside because there's no temple, there's no more sacrifices. All the Jews are in his captivity. At the same time, my reason returned on me. So he got his re his reasoning. He got his understanding by acknowledging God. What's that sound like? And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, and brightness. Well, he's my, 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 my. Me, myself, and I. That's a great God there. My honor and my brightness returned unto me. Brightness? I don't know. And my counselors and my Lord sought for me. They came looking for him. They couldn't find him before. God kept them away. And there may be people trying to seek you that God said, no, you ain't going to have anything to do with those people because if, if you have something to do with those people, I can't do a work in your life. It's called separation, division. I was established in my kingdom, so he got the kingdom back. An excellent majesty was added unto me. He got a greater kingdom by God. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, watch this, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, capital K. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. All whose works are true. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and his ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride, then he walk in pride, watch this, he is able to obey, he just shot down America, you better get off that, oh look at America, look at Babylon, look how great, you know what, you put you out there in the field and get some grass in your mouth. I don't know about grass. I mean, I like a salad, but grass, I would think it would be a lot worse than eating crow. And yet, I've heard stories from missionaries in Ethiopia. They travel for days to get to a church service. This is what the Ethiopian missionary told me. And on their way, they'll pick grass as their food. Kind of humbling. When America, we pay all this money to keep our grass, 
beautiful and our lawns manicured and all that, and it becomes your food. I think Nebuchadnezzar gives the world a great rebuke. Sinners in chapter 4. And you never hear of them again. This is, he says in, in verse 1, he says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, language. 4 1 says this entire chapter, I am speaking to go ye in all the world and preach not. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Chapter 4 is written to all people. White, black, brown, yellow, green, nations, America, Germany, ISIS, Africa, Japan, languages, English, French, Spanish. Doesn't that include the whole world? And you find in the Bible, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. You find with the heart man believes on the righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. He acknowledges the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ. And he probably doesn't, he has no idea what he's talking about. But God uses him as a prophet. And he doesn't even know he's being a prophet. Unless you study the Bible. Now, wouldn't that be more interesting to teach a Sunday school class rather than some pirate? Or some fuddy-duddy kids and some kind of stupid lessons? Maybe get them to pray for their, their leader of their country a little more. Do you think Daniel prayed for Nebuchadnezzar after all what he did? I believe he prayed for that. 